my name is William, and this week on Ninja Lab, we're taking a look at the results for Real Life Ninja Academy Windsor, Warrior Factory Syracuse Dexterity Depot, Cyanide Sports, and Obstacle and Ninja Academy. Let's start things off with Warrior Factory Syracuse, shall we? For the adult female division, in third place was Nikki Perola. The woman determined to stay on top of the leaderboard was looking really good in the first half of the course. But unfortunately, when she started the second half, she was unable to make the transfer from hook to hook on the ring lasso, and unfortunately, her run at that course ended right there. But the good news is she extends her lead by adding eight more points to her season total. In second place was Sarah Catone. Sarah was looking even better early on in the course and was also able to complete the ring lasso. Unfortunately, a few obstacles later, she attempted the Find Your Path Balance obstacle and she pretty much fell almost instantly and her run ended right there. But still, that was good enough for second place. And in first place was Rachel Franz. Rachel made a big jump to dismount the ring lasso, but it ended up paying off. And she was the only woman who was able to get past the choose your own path. Now, she actually did very well on the course, making it all the way to the last obstacle. Unfortunately, when she reached the Devil Steps, which was the last obstacle, she had only 10 seconds left on the clock and she was unable to complete the obstacle in time. But still, this gave her one of the best performances overall in the qualifier and the best performance for the females. For the adult male division, third place was Matt Strollo. The man who finished second in our world championship last year was the first of four people to finish this qualifier course. He put up a good pace and even though he didn't have a ton of beta going in, he was able to finish the entire course in a time of 2 minutes and 53.4 seconds. He's cooking for that That's over 50 seconds left. Crush the dirty rat steps. Nails that transition. Go, go. Back up. And there we go. In second place is Darren Wojcicki. Darren qualified for the world championship by finishing with a time of 2 minutes and 46.72 seconds. One of the bigger factors was that he was able to complete the second to last obstacle, the rotisserie, faster than Matt, and was able to get an overall faster pace, where he barely was able to hit the button at the very end before falling on the devil steps. But he did hit the button in a time faster and earned himself second place. And in first place is the sharp-looking Anthony Earley. Anthony showed amazing hustle throughout the first half of the course, making it through the obstacles quickly, and showed pause only where appropriate. He even made it through the rotisserie without spitting the obstacle at all. And in the end, he was able to hit the button at the end of the Devil Steps in a time of 2 minutes and 40.9 seconds, earning him first place and 10 more points towards his season total. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. It turns and burns. 
Remember, the National Ninja League Season 5 World Championship is this Friday, February 21st. If you want to go see it live, there are still tickets available. Go to NationalNinja.com for information on tickets and hotels and its location. However, if you're not able to attend in person, you can still watch it streaming live on this YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe if you aren't in order to know when all those streams go live. We'll be streaming every age division in every stage, so you can check it all out. Now, let's look at the results for Sinai Sports. For the adult female division, in third place was Liz Goss, who completed Do You Even Lache Bro, which is about the halfway point through the course. And in second place was Sophia Oster, who completed Everyone Hates PVC. Uh, but was unable to complete the rope swing afterwards, uh, and she did that in a time of 1 minute and 41.98 seconds. And in first place was Rachel Franz, who completed Everyone Hates PVC faster with a time of 1 minute and 39.52 seconds. For the adult male division, in third place was Brady Russin, who completed the ring toss, which was 13 obstacles in of the 15, with a time of 3 minutes and 4.87 seconds. And in second place was Lane Klein, as pictured here in this video that you're currently watching, who completed Jamie Ron's Doggy Doors in a time of 3 minutes and 50 seconds. He was looking very good on the course overall, very strong, but unfortunately, the course has a 4 minute time limit, and with only 10 seconds to complete the final obstacle, it just wasn't enough for Lane to reach the buzzer before time expired. And in first place was Colt Klein. Similar to his brother Lane, Colt had a very steady pace throughout the entirety of the course. However, he was just a little bit faster overall as he was able to give himself 20 seconds on the final obstacle, allowing him to finish the entire course in a time of 3 minutes and 52.73 seconds. Colt and Lane go 1 and 2 on the course. Special thanks to both of them for giving us their footage on the course. Right into the rings. Minute, go to the right. Freeze! Come on, Come on, Come on, you got 20 seconds. seconds. One swing, pop and go. Plenty, plenty of time. Plenty of time, get there. Okay, take the swing, take the swing, you're good. Plenty of time, plenty of time. You got it, you got it, you got it. It's now time for the comment question of the week. What is your favorite National Ninja League memory from the past four world championships. Pick any moment of the competition or something that happened around the competition. If you were there in person, let us know in the comments below. And now it is time for the fast forward segment. Uh, for the results for Obstacle Ninja Academy for the adult female division, in third place was Christina Gambino, who completed uh, six of the 11 obstacles. And in second place was Caitlin Bergstrom, who completed seven of the 11 obstacles. And in first place was Ashley McConville, who completed eight of the 11 obstacles. And then for the adult male division, in third place was Ethan Swanson, who qualified for the world championship by finishing in three minutes. And in second place was David Wright, who finished in two minutes. And in first place, when it with a time of 1 minute and 49.72 seconds was Caleb Bergstrom. Finished the whole course in that time. Four, Real Life Ninja Academy Windsor. For the adult female division in third place was Mia Larowitz, who completed the jump hang. And then in second place was Caitlin Briganti, who completed the helicopter bars. And in first place was Kathy Rothschild, uh, Casey Rothschild, sorry, uh, who completed the bridge from Baltimore. 
uh, which is deeper in the course than anyone else uh, from the female division. And for the adult male division, in third place was Jeremy Riley, who completed Pitfall in a time of 1 minute and 33.94 seconds. In second place was Matt Diamenko, who completed Pitfall in a time of 1 minute and 14.71 seconds. And in first place was Joe Morosky, who was the only man to complete the entire course, and he did so in a time of 1 minute and 54.61 seconds. And now let's wrap this whole thing up with the results of Dexterity Depot. In third place for the adult female division was Dana Marshall. Dana qualified for the world championship after a steady process through the early portions of the course. She was cautious but determined to get through the early obstacles and she was able to do that. Unfortunately, when she got to the wall kick portion of the course, she was just not quite high enough on the rope and was unable to maintain her grip and was eliminated at that point of the course. But the good news is that it's still good enough for third place and to qualify for Greensboro. In second place is a different Dana named Dana Fisher. She was also unable to get the rope after going the wall kick, but fortunately for her, she reached the obstacle approximately 15 seconds faster than Dana Marshall, meaning that Dana gets second place and qualifies for the world championship, which is very, very soon. And in first place was Mei Ling Huang. Mei Ling Inc. continues to impress by being the only woman to get through the wall kick obstacle. And then she made it a few more obstacles in, including a very long balance tank obstacle. Unfortunately, about halfway through the course, she encountered a different balance obstacle, the pipe attack, and was unable to maintain her balance and was eliminated at that point of the course. But the good news is she earns 10 more points towards her season total. For the adult male division, in third place was Judas Licaderlio. Judas looked very good on this course, which was very long and very challenging, totaling 18 obstacles, but he was able to get through a majority of the intense upper body obstacles, including skipping a rung on the floating monkey bars. However, with less than 30 seconds left when he reached the second to last obstacle, the Campus Ascent, he was unable to maintain his grip towards the top of the obstacle and slipped and fell on that part of the course. But fortunately for him, that was still good enough for a third place finish. In second place was the Phoenix, Naji Richardson. Naji was looking pretty comfortable on the majority of the obstacles, despite a close call on the tipsy turvy balance obstacle. However, he perhaps spent a little bit too much time on the cannonballs and floating monkey bar combo because he was moving at a slightly slower pace than Judas was. However, he was able to complete the campus ascent, meaning that he was able to finish in second place. Unfortunately for Naji, he was able to get up the warped wall, which was the final obstacle. However, he just missed hitting the buzzer within a second of the time limit. A heartbreaking finish, but still good enough for second place. And in first
first place is the young but very impressive Joseph Meisner. Joseph showed why he just might be the dark horse to win the world championship by not only being the only person to complete the entire course, but he did so with more than 30 seconds left on the clock. Joe even did it with very little beta ahead of time because he ran very early in the day. Joe was simply able to get through all the obstacles quickly and efficiently and was the only finisher and scored 10 more points towards his point total. Do not sleep on Joe Meisner. everyone make sure you subscribe right now to know when the world championship live stream goes live next week and if you want to see the full runs from this week's qualifiers check out this playlist down here see you all then later